Hi everybody, Nelson Humberto here with ExcelMail.com. I want to try today to explain something that has become a hot topic in the world of men's health, the use of HCG, human chorionic gonadotropin. Some men are actually wondering what that hormone does, uh, whether or not there are benefits to it, and whether or not it can be used with testosterone to enhance the effects of testosterone and also minimize some of the uh, side effects of testosterone replacement therapy. I just wanted to remind you, I, I draw this, uh, drew this uh, really uh, not very complex, but kind of messy, so I apologize, um, um, flowchart of how the hormonal cascade um, happens in the body. It's a very simplified uh, diagram, by the way. There are many more hormones involved in this. I just wanted to make it simpler so I can drive uh, drive my, um, my explanation. But as you well know, the pituitary gland produces LH, which is luteinizing hormone, to stimulate the lytic cells in the testicles to produce testosterone. Testosterone, in turn, aromatizes and becomes estradiol, like 0.2%, not much, and also DHT, dehydrotestosterone. DHT is uh, responsible for sex drive, mood, Libido. There's some um, uh, some negative reports also on hair loss and even prostatic hyperplasia or incre increase in prostatic size. Estradiol has been linked. Benefits of estradiol have been linked to uh, better mood, cognitive function, uh, stronger bones, even less of uh, fat mass buildup in some studies. Excess estradiol can cause in some patients gynecomastia or increase in breast size tissue. Um, and some, uh, some people, some uh, doctors speculate that could also increase water retention and even fat mass at larger uh, concentrations in the blood. But anyways, estradiol and DHT, along with testosterone, regulate the output of the pituitary gland on LH. So the more DHT, the more estradiol, the more testosterone we have because we're injecting or using gels, testosterone gels. Um, that actually uh, feeds into the feedback loop that decreases the output or actually shuts down, completely shuts down the LH production. The body basically says, we have enough testosterone. This guy is injecting or giving us some other ways of increasing their testosterone. So obviously we do not need the testicles to be producing testosterone. So it basically is shut down. LH is zero in most men that are using testosterone replacement therapy. So what happens? Um, what happens with TRT and the fact that we're shutting down LH? The Leydig cells, which are the cells that actually produce testosterone, tend to not die off, but shrink. They're not really active, so they go uh, dormant. They go like to sleep, basically. And that's, that's not a good thing. I don't think that's a good thing. Our testicles uh, may actually shrink some. It is reversal, so don't, don't, don't panic. Uh, and one way to do so, to actually reverse uh, the activity of the Leydig cells, so you do not have testicular atrophy. So use HCG along with testosterone, with combination. So uh, some studies have shown some benefits of the use of HCG plus testosterone. One of them is uh, from the group at uh, Baylor College of Medicine, Dr. Lipschultz and all his fellows, have looked at the combination of testosterone and uh, HCG to maintain uh, fertility. What happens with testosterone replacement therapy is that this LH, also FSH production, is shut down and so is our sperm production. Sperm production in men using testosterone replacement therapy can decrease almost to zero in many cases. So some men that want to have children on testosterone replacement therapy are told by the doctors to stop testosterone if they want their sperm production and quality to increase. Well, many men don't want to get off testosterone because they obviously they're not going to feel as good and they're going to crash. So the uh, Baylor group actually looked at combining the HCG and testosterone to see what happened to sperm production. They actually found that sperm production improved, increased. Fertility obviously increases and improves. So that's a way to reverse the shutdown of the LH and FSH and keep the testicles producing you know, uh, sperm. So 
It also, HCG also keeps the testicular Leydig cell plumped, activated, awake. So we have a reversal of testicular atrophy. Uh, or prevention, you can start testosterone with HCG right away. So if you don't have that problem. We have anecdotal information. There's not a single study that has proven whether or not combining HCG and testosterone boosts sex drive and, and mood. But many of the guys, the 14,000 members of Excel Mail, and myself included, I have very strong biases, do believe that HCG can enhance even more so the sex um, drive and mood enhancement effects of testosterone replacement. But the most important thing, and there's a little um, erased uh, thing, and the most important thing that nobody talks about, about the use of HCG with testosterone, is the fact that HCG reactivates upstream hormones. Can I explain what that means? I think um, some, some doctors call it uh, backfilling the pathways or something like that. And this is, we need, and most of you know, we need cholesterol. Cholesterol is a, it, it's a bad thing, it can increase heart disease, but we need enough cholesterol to produce hormones. It's really the, the basis, the molecule that is, is where all hormones come from, okay? So LH, which is this guy, lipodicin hormone, that was shut down by testosterone replacement, it's, it's important. It actually, LH is involved in the uptake of cholesterol into cells to produce hormones. Hey, but if we're using testosterone replacement, this guy is no longer there. LH is also involved in the transformation or, or production from cholesterol to pregnorolon, another hormone that has been linked to neurocognitive benefits. To be honest with you, we don't have enough data in men and what pregnorolon does in men. But since we don't have any LH because testosterone replacement is shut down, our pregnorolon goes to zero or very low levels. The same thing happens with progesterone, which comes from pregnolone, also has some neurocognitive effects, uh, a calming hormone in men. It also goes down to basically zero hormone. Two studies have actually shown that because there is not LH to activate that conversion. So basically we are, when we are on testosterone replacement therapy, we shut down LH, FSH, and the conversion of cholesterol to pregnorolone, the conversion of pregnorolone to progesterone. We shut down progesterone, pregnorolone, and everything else that comes down, downwards from there. Pregnorolone goes into 17 hydroxy pregnorolone, because this guy's not here anymore. BHEA drops, even though the adrenal glands can still make some, so it may not drop all the way to zero. Progesterone, which converts into 17 hydroxy progesterone, is not there any longer. This guy goes down. Androstein dion obviously goes down or gets down to zero. But this guy obviously doesn't shut down because we are injecting testosterone or using gels or pellets or whatever it is. So this is protected. This side of the, I'm gonna move this. Anyways, that's a promo logo that just fell off because I need some more space. But anyways, this part of the pathway is obviously protected. We're using testosterone, we're injecting or gels, whatever. Testosterone converts into DHT, the higher testosterone, by um, the action of this 5-alpha uh, reductase enzyme. And testosterone converts um, to estradiol by the aromatase enzyme, right? So, what happens then? We bring HCG in. The program usually requires Lipschultz and, um, and the Baylor College of Medicine uh, doctors uh, basically gave men that were injecting once a week or once every two weeks testosterone. They gave them HCG at 500 IUs three times a week. That was their protocol. And obviously they got good results when it came to sperm production and fertility. That's about all they looked at. I'm trying to get them to look at other parameters, like I said before, uh, sex drive and mood, even testicular, testicular size. 
we all know that HCV pre, uh, pre improves testicular size and reverses testicular atrophy, but we don't have that many studies to be honest, or even any studies to prove that. Uh, we need to educate doctors that are not using HCG, do not like HCG, they are afraid of HCG, of why HCG is important. So without data, we cannot do that. Even a guy like me, I'm, I'm an engineer, I'm not a physician or a clinician. Whatever I say may, may not mean anything to them without data. So I'm very, uh, I'm a proponent of having more data on HCG so that doctors feel more comfortable uh, prescribing it with uh, testosterone replacement. Anyways, so we bring HCG in. Uh, some guys uh, report better uh, testicular size. Um, uh, many guys on Excel Mail, not many, several have even emailed me saying that finally they got their wives pregnant uh, because their sperm production quality improved. That was a good thing. But the best thing, and this is something that even I didn't know four years ago when I wrote my, five years ago, when I wrote my Testosterone and Man's Guide book, is these guys. These guys are basically brought back to life. Pregnolone and progesterone. Because HCG mimics acts like LH, which we shut down, but it is not LH. I want to say that it's not LH. Some doctors think that by giving you HCG, they test your LH and they find out your LH is zero still. It is not LH. It acts like LH, but in blood testing, it doesn't show up as LH. So that's a clarification there. So anyway, so we have HCG here doing the same job as LH, it wakes up this process again. So not only we have this part of the pathway, you know, happening, but we also reactivate all these hormones, which may have beneficial effects for men in a neurocognitive way. As I said, there is emerging data on all these hormones, but the body made these hormones not, not only to serve as intermediates to testosterone, but they have functions. And shutting them down may not be good long term. Although we have long term data on testosterone that shows that it is pretty uh, safe um, if you don't have history of prostatic cancer. That's about it. But everything, even that has been disputed. But what is happening, and that's something I'd like to have researchers look at, when we reactivate the upstream hormones that have been shut down by the effect, the, the shutdown effect of testosterone on LH. So that's very, very exciting, and, and hopefully this made some kind of sense to you guys. Um, just to write it down, many guys on Excel Mail are using 100 to 200 milligrams per week of testosterone, either CPNA, NNH. Sometimes they inject once a week, sometimes twice a week. The belief is that if we divide the dose in half and inject twice a week, it's, it keeps uh, blood levels more constant. I do that. I inject 50 milligrams twice a week with a tiny insulin syringe on my, um, on my shoulder. And then you bring in 500, you know, anywhere from 350. Some studies show that anything under 350 doesn't really work to keep intratestricular testosterone going and the testicles and the leydig cells happy. So let's say 350 to 500 I use of HCG two to three times a week. So we, most of us are using, I don't, I'm not planning to have kids, I just want testicles to look okay, I want my upstream hormones to look okay, I want my sex drive and mood to stay up where I should be. I've been using testosterone for 24 years, so I'm definitely an old timer there. So for those that are looking to get their wives pregnant, the only protocol research and proven to work is either 200, 100 to 200 milligrams a week of injections or using also a T-gel. There's no reason why men cannot use a T-gel or a T-cream. It doesn't matter, testosterone. Either way, whatever works for you. I have no biases. I inject, but I have no biases against gels or creams. And uh, bringing in two to three injections a week of HCG, anywhere from 350 I use to 500 I use. I personally inject twice a week, 
uh, 500 I use of HCG, and I combine that HCG with 50 milligrams of testosterone in the same syringe. Some people think I'm crazy, but I'm actually saving two injections a week. So nobody wants to inject four times or even three times a week. I inject only twice a week, uh, 50 milligrams of testosterone, 500 I use of HCG in every injection. Everything has worked great. My blood work is perfect. Um, everything looks good. I feel good. It definitely works for me. If I was to um, want to have kids, you know, married or, or wanting to have kids, I would probably use 300, uh, 500 I use three times a week, like Lipschultz and the Baylor College of Medicine doctors um, actually studied and found to work. So that's it. I think this helps. Um, probably wasn't very clear with all the drawings and all that. But this is my attempt to explain the benefits of HCG beyond uh, testicular uh, size uh, and testicular atrophy prevention. Hope you enjoyed this. I'll have a few other videos coming up, so stay tuned. Thank you.